Hi there, this is Bob from CenturyAutoAir.com. Today we are going to reseal a Denso uh, 10S series compressor used a lot on Chevy Suburbans, Tahoes, Chrysler minivans, Hondas, uh, Toyotas. It's just one of the most popular Denso compressors as well as one of the most popular compressors on any kind of car right now. Uh, for starters, good idea to drain your oil into a measuring cup, measure how much you get out, then when you're done add back an extra couple ounces as well in addition to what actually came out of the compressor. If your compressor is a switch on the back, I advise leaving it alone. They get extraordinarily stuck on in there. You will probably break the switch taking it out and chances are it hasn't been leaking anyway. In the teardown, the bolts are long. I will use an impact uh, to speed the process up, but I recommend using a 3 8 breaker bar in a vise. Um, they come apart much easier than even with an impact at that point. So let's get started. We start by taking the through bolts out. The rear head will fall off. Just take your valve plates and set them aside. Off to the side, I wouldn't disassemble that that is a unit yet. Take your bolts out. There are sealing washers on these bolts. You want to keep track of them. They will get hung up on the front cylinder head. We'll replace those later. The front cylinder head will drop off as well. These can only build one way. They all are uh, on dollop pins, so we don't have to mark things. The center case section is held together with two bolts right here. This compressor does not use O-ring seals. It uses steel gaskets that compress to seal. It's one of the reasons they're dependable, but the shaft seals will still leak. Hammer and lightly separate our case out. Rubber mallet being a better item to use here. It is just released from the pins. You want to keep pressure on the crankshaft, forcing down as you pull this case half up. That will leave the pistons and rotating assembly intact where you won't have ball bearings falling all over the place. Now we can get to our center gasket. Set that off to the side. Right now we're going to go ahead and remove our shaft seal. Just kind of keep your valve plates all in order. Set them off to the side. Shaft seal comes out from behind. There is not a, a, a snap ring holding this one in. They punch out from the back. So carefully with a screwdriver, side to side, tap on it. They can be really stuck sometimes. Let's go a little at a time, drop out. And there's the seal. Actually, we're all tore down now. I'm gonna go get my seals and we'll go ahead and we will assemble this unit. So we'll start by reassembling this unit by doing the shaft seal first. Take your seal and your seal installer available at centuryautoair.com. It is an absolute critical item to use a seal installer. You will 90% of the time ruin this new front seal without using this tool. I lubricate the seal first. Then take the seal and squirt a little oil on the backside, wearing latex gloves, and gently force the seal down over the seal protector and pull it out. Notice I did that backwards. That is what conditions that seal so that you don't tear it when you go back in. When you look at the seal, the part that extruded outwards faces into the compressor. So looking at the front cylinder head, that is what you should see. So let's go ahead and we will now install that seal. Let's get it set down into the back. Take a socket that fits best. This is just a three quarter inch socket. Very gently force it down straight. Check and make sure you have not cut the seal. Once again, there is no retainer on this type of compressor. So while we're here, let's go ahead and assemble our center half. Grab a new center case seal, and 
I like to take a little bit of oil and very lightly cover it. No sealants, not needed. Just a little bit of light oil and set it on the dowel pins. Then, take your case, hold your seal, very gently work it down over the pistons. We'll slide forward. Just kind of catch it and slide it back together. At this point, we can go ahead and put our two shorter bolts in and snug them up. You can torque these down now if you like, or you can just tighten them a little bit until we torque everything else. I should mention that all these bolts should be tight to approximately 23 foot-pounds. Pull that up together. It's also a good time to take a look inside a compressor, make sure there's no burned marks, that the, the pistons aren't scored in their bores. At that point, you have to replace the compressor. Okay, we're just going to cinch that up. We'll torque that later. Uh, we can do the rear valve section now. Take our pieces that we previously pulled out and we can begin the stacking process of seals. Once again, a little bit of light oil. In our case and really these can go on only one way. What will happen is if you're not doing it right, the ear won't line up with the holes or the, the pins or the through bolt holes. Just set that gasket off to the side so we don't get confused. Our valve plate, our reed valve stuck to the back of the, the plate, so that's kind of handy. Also, this one is marked with an R for rear. Just stack it. This item is your rear discharge reed valve plate. Uh, these snap off all the time, so if you have a compressor that's making a weird rattling sound when you rev it up, it may have broke that off. Um, they're just starting to become available, so watch our website. I must say though that usually when they break, they go through the compressor and do quite a bit of damage. That just sets right on top of those dowels. Now I'll take our other new gasket. And we'll set it right down over that, setting the R1 off to the side so we don't get confused. Take our rear cylinder head and index it so it sits on the dowels. Just like that. You can flip it over, just kind of holding everything together, set it aside. Let's do our front stack. Start with first a gasket and our dowel pins that fell out earlier. Rotate this until it lines up correctly. for just a second. Drop the... Okay, we're back. I just dropped one of those dowel pins right into the hole there. It went down a compressor, but it shook right back out. So we'll now take our gasket. Turn it until everything indexes properly. Again, we're going to make sure that all holes are still left open. If you mess it up, it just won't go back together. Main valve plate. Once again, with the reed valve still stuck to it. And it's marked F for front. Our discharge valve. And it just sets right on those two dowels and covers up the holes. Just sets right on there. Take our front head plate, gasket. Set it right on there. Okay, now uh, we're going to go ahead and install our front cylinder head. One thing I should note is this shaft, they will get a little bit corroded around the ends. Take a, this is just a shop rag, but better to use a lint-free towel. Uh, just kind of cover up the front of it and you can take like a scotch Brite pad and just gently clean up the shaft and take any marks off of it. Okay, so our 
the shaft is clean, you can check, make sure there's no nicks and things. There really shouldn't be mainly what you'd find is corrosion. So again, this is just mineral oil I'm using to assemble it. Just a light oil. Let things slide together. Our seal installer tool sets right over the shaft like that and allows it so that that seal doesn't get cut up on those splines. So we'll go ahead and set front cylinder head on. Very gently, we work it over the end of the tool. Light rotating motion, then I reach over, kind of hold the installer tool there. It doesn't come up just yet. And whole thing indexes right in front, take the tool out, and the unit's put together. This particular kit, most kits do come with new sealing washers. This particular kit did not. Go ahead and install, make sure washers on each one. We have not had issues with reusing these in the past. It's just nice when they're new in the kit, but not all kits have them. So just make sure each one has it on there. Tighten these all up. So finally, we just want to tighten up all the through bolts, torquing them down fairly evenly with a with a small wrench. That way, nothing is being forced. You'll actually feel the case sections sucking together as you go. I prefer to do this once again with a quarter inch drive step, so I can feel what's going on. If something doesn't feel right, I can stop. After you get these all cinched up to where they stop moving. Take your torque wrench and tighten these to 23 foot-pounds, tighten them evenly, as well as the two back bolts there as well. Uh, not a difficult compressor to do. It's all metal gasket, goes pretty smoothly. Main thing is getting your shaft seal in uh, from the right direction. Uh, I do these very quickly. I'm using hammers and just for sake of getting through these, you want to wear latex gloves. Use a rubber mallet when taking things apart. Take your time. Uh, I use mineral oil to assemble these. It is not as hygroscopic as the pag oils are, so therefore you don't get uh, corrosion around the joints and seals. Um, keeping cleanliness and, and lint-free is a big thing. You saw me using shop rags. You should probably use lint-free towels and take your time. Once again, all these parts are available at centuryautoair.com. Thank you.